just in a different room. Oh. <laughs> With a really fancy light in front of my face. Not your white Microsoft Word document? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Busted. Yeah. Sarah, do you have a ring light? Uh, it's like a, the, like an office professional version. So it's not an actual ring form, but yeah, it's something like that. That's good. You're like glowing. Yeah, no, yeah. Kelly, let me know when we're live, please. You, it's all set. Oh, okay. Um, well, in that case, good evening. I'd like to call tonight's meeting of the Scarborough School Board to order for Thursday, September 16th. Can I please have the attendance? Mrs. Giftis? Here. Dr. Gill? Here. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Ms. Layton? Here. Mrs. Lindstrom? Here. Mrs. Scyther is absent. Mrs. Turner? Here. Ms. Giftis? Here. Here. And Ms. Bertulia? Here. Thank you. If you could please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Great. Um, 4.0, adjustments to the agenda. Are there any adjustments to tonight's agenda? Uh, yes, we have two adjustments. Um, one is, and we've included a, an additional slide, uh, two slides actually, regarding the upcoming uh, November election that are coming up and then also I added a slide uh, um, regarding staff va uh, vaccination reporting. Okay. You guys want to provide um, an update uh, to the community about. Great, thank you. Okay, moving on. Bad point no, public comment on tonight's agenda items. I know we had one that came in via email and it doesn't look as though we have any attendees. Kelly, if you wanted, if you could read the one that we received, that would be great. Sure. Hello, my name is Peter Freilinger, a resident of Scarborough and a parent of a student at the Wentworth Intermediate School. I know that Maine DHHS and Department of Education released statistics on faculty vaccination rates on September 15th, 2021, in the Cumberland County Municipal School Districts, only Scarborough and Bonnie Eagle failed to submit information or ask that their data be suppressed. Could the school board comment on why this is the case and if possible, give information to the public about vaccination rates at the various Scarborough schools. I note that the state DHHS has described this reporting as required. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Nobody else is uh, in as the attendees. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out public comment, bringing us to 6.0. Can I have a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRSA 405-6D for the purpose of discussion, discussing the July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024 bus driver collective bargaining agreement to return to public session? So moved. Second. I think we're ready to vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Baker? <clears throat> yes. Ms. Giftis? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes.
Great. We'll return shortly.
right. Like everybody is back. Um, moving on to 7.0 new business. Making a motion to put together 7.1, the meeting minutes of July 15th, 2021 workshop and 7.2 meeting minutes of July 15th, 2021 business meeting as one motion to approve as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, I think we're ready to vote. Ms. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Scyther is absent, sorry. Uh, Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Giftis? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. 7.3 is appointments. 7.3.1, the high school fall coaches. Motion to approve the high school fall coaches as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, ready to vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Giftis? Yes. And Ms. Bertilia? Yes. Passes. 7.2, the middle school fall coaches, motion to approve the middle school fall coaches as presented. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Pavlonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Ms. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Ms. Giftis? Yes. And Ms. Bertilia? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. That also passes. 7.3.3. It's a motion to approval of Scarborough High School's Winter Cooperative Wrestling Team with Gorham High School. And I think I froze again. Yes. <laughs> All right, do I need to redo the motion? Or was it heard? We heard the motion. It's a motion. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, discussion. I know I have a lot of questions about this, so I'm not sure if we wanna bring Mike Legage in to talk or Jeff, if you're gonna be speaking to this. You're Jeff, you're on mute. Jeff, you're on mute. Sorry, I wasn't I wasn't prepared to speak to it okay. this evening. Um is it okay to bring Mike in? Mm -hmm. Mike, I think you're in as an attendee now or a panelist. Um, I know I have a few questions with respect to the cooperative wrestling team. Um, I know it's come up um, with other sports that we have done is I've actually seen other wrestling groups that have cooperatives. My big question has to do with how the students from Scarborough are going to get to Gorham if we will provide transportation for them? The, that program is actually going to run out of Scarborough. So Gorham students are going to be coming to Scarborough. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. That answered most of my questions right there. I'll stop at that. Okay, that was easy. Can I ask a quick question while you're here, Mike? Sure. Um, is do we do this because we don't are, are we lacking wrestlers? I guess I thought yeah, we had actually, a No, it's a really good question because this is probably in the last 13 years 
this is the first time we've really done a cooperative team agreement, um, a real one. We, uh, a few years back, we had two um, uh, uh, hockey players, female hockey players from Socopy Valley that wanted to join our team. It wasn't really a true cooperative agreement um, because we didn't need the extra players. We were trying to help them out so that their kids could compete because no other school would take them. Um, and so we uh, went before the MPA management committee and made a proposal about that. This is different. This is a true cooperative agreement and it does have to do with participation rates. We would not likely offer the program if we didn't uh, collaborate with somebody. The numbers are just too low for us. We had, um, I think, nine or 10 kids that participated. Last year, I think seven of them were seniors. Oh. Um, our numbers would just be very, very low if we didn't do a cooperative agreement. Um, I, I anticipate um, with Gorham that our numbers will be, you know, somewhere in the 10 to 15 ballpark, which is still very small for a wrestling team. We likely will not fill all the weight classes. Um, and they, and, and to be, to have a true team, they really like you to fill all the weight classes. Somebody doesn't want to travel and then have to forfeit matches, for example, because we don't have anybody to, they don't have anybody to wrestle so it's still going to be a small team, even as a cooperative, because Gorham is small too, but we're anticipating anyways between 10 and 15 kids as it gets started and then hopefully kind of build upon that. The cooperative agreement is a two-year agreement, so we are locked into it for two years, um, I, but I would anticipate that it would likely go longer than that. Thank you. I do have one more question, Mike. Does this have any impact on the middle school program? No, really with the MPA rules, the middle school and high school programs are separate. Um, I suppose if we wanted to do some type of agreement like this, um, we, we likely could. It's a little bit harder at the middle school level um, because of transportation, uh, you know, every day. Some schools, Scarborough doesn't do this. We, we provide transportation to our kids if it's outside of our town, but some schools do allow kids to, to drive on their own places. And so, um, you know, I, I'm not sure that Gorham will send a bus every day. It might be kids driving themselves to Scarborough. I don't know that. I don't know what their plans are. That's up to them, but, um, that's a little bit more challenging when it comes to middle school. We haven't had a discussion about doing cooperative team with middle school, but to answer your question, it's not, it's not out of the arena to, to do that. It's just that it's very, it's more of a agreement between the two schools as opposed to uh, an MPA agreement that has all kinds of rules associated with it. Thank you. Alicia? Thank you. Uh, I'm curious if um, the agreement has provisions about uh, philosophy related to athletics and coaching and whether it has a provision for ultimate decision making. And if you've also had um, conversations with Gorham about um, like COVID protocols and, and to determine whether you're on the same page with them um, in terms of how to handle those sorts of discrepancies or potential discrepancies in, in the way different districts handle those situations. Um, it's our coach, um, that would be coach and team. We'd hire the person, they'd follow our protocols. Um, and we have this. We have the same rules in terms of COVID as as uh, most public schools do. They they are required to wear masks indoors, et cetera, et cetera. So I think those are 
some issues that we'll have to cross when we get there, because to be honest with you, I'm not sure what winter sports are going to look like right now. And I'm not sure what wrestling is going to look like right now. We're just putting plans in place to be able to do this if the sport is actually offered. And just, just to add to what Mike is saying, and, and he can speak to this as well, is that the superintendents, particularly uh, uh, Cumberland County superintendents, are um, talking constantly with athletics as, as well, just about having the same COVID-related protocols, um, particularly across our county, um, in between school districts, as well as, you know, recognizing the fact that we're, we're playing games against Gorham and, and other schools in the area to make sure that we're consistent. So that, that's been very consistent, I, you know, just in, in my experience over the last year and a half. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? I think we're ready to vote. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Giftis? Yes. And Ms. Bertulia? Yes. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. 7.3.4, motion for the approval of the July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2024, bus driver contract. So moved. Second. And discussion? I just wanna, before we vote, I just wanna say thank you to all the members of, of the negotiations team on the board, as well as the administrators like Diane that participated in this process all the way through. Um, and I also want to publicly thank the SEA team for investing the time they did to help us come to this mutually agreed upon um, contract. I'm just, I'm very excited about it. Excellent. Thank you. Gabby? Um, do me and Yulia vote on this if we didn't, weren't a part of the executive session? I believe you can. Sorry, what'd you say? Have we had a... Yes, you can. Okay. I will go back off video in the hopes that this fixes the bandwidth, but yes, you can vote. Okay. I think we're ready to vote. Mrs. Giftis? We couldn't hear you, Mrs. Giftis. I apologize, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, thank you. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Giftis? Yes. And Ms. Berkelia? Yes. Motion passes. Um, 8.0 starts the additional items. Kelly, would you, oh, Nick? Yeah, I just want to make a quick statement now that we voted. I couldn't say this before the vote, but I'll say it now because I know the public is always interested to know about these contracts. And so just so you know, once um, both sides have ratified the, con ratified the contract, we ratified it tonight. Once the SEA ratifies the contract, we'll be able to present it uh, in, in deep, more detail to the public. But we can't do that before they ratify. I just wanted that to be clear for anyone in the public that um, watches this or is watching this that wants to know why we're not discussing the contract openly. Thank you for that, Nick. Um, Kelly, if you would be able to share your screen. 8.1 is an election update. Shannon. Perfect, thanks. Um, Town Council has approved the, the measures that are that will appear on the ballot in November. So what this means for us is that the track and turf replacement is officially on the ballot for voting. Um, the verbiage that you will see on the ballot is what you see in front of you, and it reads, shall the order entitled order authorizing issuance of up to $1,900,800 in bonds of the town to fund the cost of the high school turf field and track replacement be approved. So that's the measure you'll see on the ballot. Um, it'll be in the second position. 
Um, and as we move closer to November, please be on the lookout for more information regarding the track and the track and the turf and its condition and why um, this why there is a need for replacement. Thank you. If we can move to the next slide, please. Um, and this is a reminder that candidates night will be held virtually on Thursday, September 30th. Uh, this is your opportunity to hear the four people who are running for the three open seats for the school board, um, hear what they're standing for, um, get to know them a little bit better so that on November 2nd, you can cast your ballots. Moving into 8.2, it's a staff vaccination report. Yeah, I, um, I, I copied the um, community message that I sent out to all staff uh, and all families uh, earlier today. Um, I, I, I wish there was a, a, a better story for what happened, um, but the reality is, is we had um, staff vaccination data ready to submit um, uh, to the DOE by the 10th of September. Uh, the link that we were supposed to use submit it, to submit it to uh, went to Sandy Prince. <laughs> so. Um, we didn't have the link that we needed in order to, to properly submit it, which is why, um, you know, following the Press Herald article this morning, if, if people wanted to, to log on to the portal to find out uh, staff vaccination rates for Scarborough, uh, they got um, suppressed or did not submit. So we're working to, to fix this, obviously, um, and make sure that, that starting October 1st, uh, when we submit we, we submit monthly staff vaccination rates that, that, that it'll all be appropriately placed in the portal. Um, I did want to publicly just talk about where we are in terms of staff vaccination rates. So out of approximately 550 staff members, we've had a little over 300 uh, complete the survey. And again, this, this survey, and, and this is, um, you know, we've, we've messaged this out to staff already. Uh, it is anonymous. So, so um, no, no staff member is disclosing any, you know, uh, personal health data. Um, and it's reported cumulatively by school. So uh, we've heard from, like I said, a, a little over 300 staff members from, from all different schools across the district. And out of those 300 that have completed the survey, 97% uh, have responded um, that they're fully vaccinated. So, you know, I just wanted to apologize publicly for any confusion that this created in the press. Um, you know, overall, everyone has been so um, responsible and cognizant of, of uh, COVID related um, standards and, and, you know, particularly our staff. So, uh, and then also I'm gonna be sending out um, more communication tomorrow um, encouraging all staff to, to complete the uh, anonymous survey, which is very simple to do um, so that we can have, you know, closer to 100% of our staff having responded to the survey and make sure that that 97% uh, reflects our entire staff as opposed to right now we're at about probably around 60% or so of staff that have, have responded. So um, I just wanted to go through that um, and then also anticipate, you know, further communication regarding our staff vaccination rates. And as far as what would get reported in the portal, the denominator is always the, the total number of staff in the district. That numerator would represent the number of, you know, the number of staff that are fully vaccinated, you know, inclusive of you know, those who haven't yet responded to the survey. So that's why we wanna make sure that, that everyone's had that opportunity and we've got um, an accurate number in terms of the percent of staff um, that are fully vaccinated. Thank you. May I ask a quick question? Of yeah. Um, well, first, thank you. First, thank you for um, sending your letter out to the community. I think it's really important that we communicate transparently and I really appreciate that you um, you sent that out and um, explained the situation as graciously as you did. Um, my only question or my question is about those that are not responding. If 
the requirement to report is 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 the requirement that we make the survey available to staff and we encourage them to answer or is the requirement for a hundred percent of the staff to answer the survey when we're reporting the requirement is for us to report uh cumulative staff vaccination results so so that's why we've been we've provided an anonymous way to do that so yes in the in the end you know um we need to have all staff respond um mm -hmm. it's just it's and and we're not the only I don't, we're, we're definitely not the only school district struggling with this it's it's that balance between um you know staff confidentiality about their own personal health records and responding to a survey like this. So um, that's, where it, that's where it can get challenging to make sure that, that staff understand and trust, okay, um, you know, by, by signing on to this anonymous Google survey, I'm not disclosing in, you know, my own personal health records or, or facing as, you know, um, some of our teachers have, you know, in July and August and perhaps even still, questions, you know, directed at them from parents as to whether or not they're vaccinated mm -hmm. and, and being in a putting, being put in a position where um, they feel like they need to respond yay or nay. So that, that's, that's been the challenge a little bit, just in terms of making sure that staff feel comfortable in, in reporting their status to us, um, you know, and, and I've, you know, I've, I've been communicating um, with, the, with the SCA as well on this is, you know, we want, you know, based on the information that we have so far from over 300 of our staff members, you know, I'm pretty confident that the vast majority of our staff are vaccinated. Um, you know, and we've, we've heard, like I said, for almost 60% of our staff from all the buildings. So that, that you know, if you project that out, um, you know, I want to make sure that that the numbers that we're reporting to the state are as accurate as possible, and you know the whole staff, I would think, um, you know, would want would want that as well to make sure that what we're reporting is accurate, and and uh, as I pointed out, we can do that um, in such a way that that uh, protects people's um, personal health records. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Jeff? Okay, seeing none. 9.0, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Mrs. Giftis? Yes. Dr. Gill? Yes. Ms. Casalonis? Yes. Ms. Layton? Ms. Layton? Yes. Mrs. Lindstrom? Yes. Mrs. Turner? Yes. Ms. Giftis? Yes. Yes. Thank you all. Have a great night.